In the past, lending and borrowing was simple. As long as you made your payments, the bank made sure your balloon stayed aloft. But about a decade ago, bankers figured out a new use for debt. They turned debt into an asset that they could buy and sell. Let's say this bunch of balloons will eventually pay off $2. The bank could wait around for the debts to pay off, or the bank could sell them for a quicker $1 today. The banks were happy because they made a quicker profit. Investors were happy because they now had a new way to make money. And consumers were happy because it allowed countries around the world to transform profits that were decades away into economic growth right now. This new age of debt created jobs and businesses everywhere. A loan for a jacuzzi in Cleveland could now help open a shoe factory in Thailand. As interest rates fell, more and more debt balloons soared. Loans were cheap in these high-flying times and everybody wanted a balloon. Banks and mortgage brokers practically gave them away. Some went to people who probably shouldn't have had them. And it turns out many of these subprime borrowers couldn't keep their balloons up in the air. But banks and investors didn't have to worry at the time because a kind of money angel arrived, promising to watch over everyone. For a fee, these angels promised to pump money into leaky balloons. They called it credit default insurance. It allowed those higher risk loans and the global economy to keep flying by giving banks the confidence to keep lending. Credit default insurance and similar financial tools now account for more than $45 trillion. That's more than the value of the US stock market, mortgage and treasury markets combined. But can these angels keep that many balloons afloat? They're not regulated by the government. And now that the credit crisis has hit, we're finding out that those angels might be flying on a wing and a prayer.